Hi, you guys. I cannot believe I don't get to be there today. I am so disappointed. Like, really disappointed. In fact, I'll tell you a secret. I cried. Period. That's it. But I'm happy that I still get to see you. Um, or at least you get to see me. I'm picturing you, though, because I know where you're sitting right now. I hope you didn't give anybody a hard time about your seat. So, for those of you who already know me and had me last year, I'm so excited you're back. Um, for those of you who are new this year, I'm so excited to get to know you. So, my name is Miss Jody, or Mrs. Jody, or Mrs. Davison, um, whatever you prefer. And I get to teach you history, which happens to be one of my favorite things. And I'm going to tell you a secret. So I used to be a teacher. I taught second grade and I taught third grade. And it's my favorite. So you guys actually are like my favorite age group. I love getting to work with you guys. Lots of fun. So I know that things are a little different this year, but there are lots of things that are the same. And one of the things that are the same is that we're going to start every class praying. So take a second. Close your eyes. Still your body. Turn on your ears so that you can listen and hear, okay? So, close your eyes with me. God, I thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I thank you that you have um, allowed us to be a part of the co-op, um, and that we get to see our friends, and that we get to learn more, and that in learning more, we get to learn more about you and how you fit in to everything um, that we are learning about. I pray that you would help us this year um, to be good friends and to make good friends and that you would help us to learn big things and not just learn them, but apply them to our lives. I pray that you would help each of us to, when we're at co-op and when we're at home, to concentrate and to really focus on what you want us to learn in everything that we do. I thank you so much for this day and for these people. I pray that you'll keep us all healthy and safe so that we can keep meeting and that you'll bring me back to co-op next week. It's in your name I pray. Amen. So, are you ready? You want to know why I'm excited to teach you guys? Okay, so for those of you who had me last year, you know um, about, we talk a lot about how God made us um, and how he made us all differently. So, I know that God made you and God made me. And I don't always like the same kind of things as you. Um, I might like to do crazy adventurous things, and which I do. And you might not. You might not like going ziplining or bungee jumping or climbing fun things. But those are things that are exciting to me. Um, but that doesn't mean that you are bad and I'm good. See, if I were there right now, I'd give you a second to think about what's something you really love. But... When this is over, you're going to get to play a game. I'm not going to give away any of Miss Carla's secrets. Um, but you get to play a game after this, and you'll get to talk a little bit about what makes you you. Um, but I don't know much about Harry Potter, but do any of you know anything about Harry Potter? Um, I know that there's this thing called a sorting hat, and it places you in, like, a group. And it says that you're naturally this way. And you're naturally this way, and you're naturally this way, and this way. So we are going to be learning about how we can be intelligent in different ways. So um, Miss Carla has some papers for you. So if you want to take a second and pass these out, um, these are your weekly homework options. And basically, each week you get to experiment and figure out how you are smart. So I have given you 32 different activities, and there's eight different categories. And through all of co-op, um, you get to pick your homework. Listen closely. You get to pick your homework. I'm not going to pick it for you. You can do as many fun things as you want. And some kids from last year can tell you. They were making videos. They were doing skits, creating instruments, building things with Legos. They were... What? Oh, Micah and that awesome fox mask. I will never forget that. And I believe it was Eliza who made the bone instrument. 
Um, anyways, some really awesome things came out of our learning last year, and some really awesome things are going to come out of our learning this year. So this paper is really important. You need to take it home. So as soon as class is over, when you get your snack, you need to put this in your book bag so that you can give it to your parents, okay? So we're going to talk about some of the different ways you're smart. So there's word smart. That means you're good with your words. Um, there's math smart. That means that you kind of enjoy numbers and patterns. You like having things in order. You might really enjoy playing games that require strategy. Um, you might like to do experiments. Okay. There's picture smart. Do you think in pictures? Um, do you remember what you see? Um, does it help you to remember things if you can physically see it or create it yourself? That's picture smart. There's music smart. Um, do you love to sing or play an instrument? If you hear a song, can you remember every single word? Because I know that from the time I was a little girl, all the little songs that I learned, I can remember them. And it's one of the ways that I have learned, like Schoolhouse Rock. Have you ever listened to Schoolhouse Rock? How cool it is to learn from Schoolhouse Rock. So that's another example. Um, music smart. Do you sing about your everyday life? Do you turn things into songs and into musicals? So there's our first four. Are you body smart? Are you an athlete? Do you like to do things, experience things physically, to act things out? Okay. Do you like to dance or act or play sports? You might be body smart. There's people smart. Um, does spending time with other people make you feel excited and have lots of energy? Do you enjoy working in groups? Are you really good at convincing people of things? The next one is self-smart. Are you aware of your feelings? Do you like to be by yourself? Do you like to spend time thinking? And you have to think things through to process them, to understand them, and to learn them. Okay, do you need time alone? That's a big one, okay? And the last one is nature smart. Um, are you interested in like the world that God created? Do you enjoy being outside and experiencing God in nature? Um, you might be nature smart. So during this whole year, you may not think every week like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely picture smart because you might enjoy doing activities in different areas. But what I want you to notice is that over time, you kind of focus in a certain area. It's where you enjoy doing things the most. Um, and that might be a way that God has made you smart. But I have a question for you. I'm not there, so I can't call on you. But somebody, please, raise your hand and tell me. Can you be only smart in one way? Can you? How about thumbs up yes, thumbs down no? Let me see your thumbs down. Because just because you're really good in one area doesn't mean that you can't improve in other areas. Just because you're really good in one area doesn't mean you're, really, you're not really good in two areas. God has given us many gifts. Well, my next question is, let's say you're really, really good at talking. Hint, that's me. But you're not so good at numbers and logic and practical, logical things. That might not be your best strength. Does that mean that you never have to worry about, like, the math part of the world? Thumbs up? Thumbs down? It doesn't. See, part of being a Christian, part of being a human that God created is accepting that he made us with certain gifts, but we shouldn't just accept that we can't do other things and never try them. So one of the things that you're required to do in this class is to do something from each category on this sheet. Now, I'm going to tell you some of my particular favorite activities that you can do, okay? So I want you to listen and think, ooh, this might actually sound kind of fun. Because most people don't think of history as fun. They don't think of doing history homework as an exciting thing, but it really can be. So, let's see. Oh, yeah, I thought of something else. Alex and Zach last year built this really, really awesome Stonehenge replica using a hot glue gun and rocks from outside, and it was this giant, awesome replica of what it looked like. Those are the kind of things you can look forward to. Okay, so... Write a riddle and give hints to help your classmates guess a character you read about this week. 
That's in Word Smart because we're using words to teach. Um, so I'm going to give you a hint. Let's see. Three stones. He was played by an asparagus in a Veggie Tales video. Can you think of who I'm talking about? Somebody say it, please. David. David. David and Goliath. Okay. I just gave a few hints and you guys guessed it. Um, you could record yourself telling a story in your own words from this week's reading. So you can retell the whole story. Now, anything that you record, your parents can send to me. You don't have to share it with the whole class, but you can if you want to. And lots of times last year, um, kids sent me their videos. They emailed them. They uploaded them to YouTube. They text them to me. Um, and then we got to watch them as a class, which is really fun. So anytime I say record yourself doing something, it's something that you can share with the class, but you're not required to. So if you don't want to share it, but you make it, I would just ask that you share it with me, okay? All right. So the next one would be draw a map with details of a battlefield or a country or a region that we're studying. So think about it. Like, do you really like studying wars and battles and equipment and stuff? Because you can draw a replica of a battlefield. Um, draw a picture of what life was like in historical times in comparison today. So like what fashion might have been like back then or what weapons might have been like back then and what they are today. Okay. You could build a model with Legos. Oh, I froze. Am I back? Okay, I'm back. Okay, you can build a model with Legos, um, Play-Doh, paper, fabric. We had all sorts of stuff last year that people built with a model. Paper mache. Yeah, somebody, uh, Jackson and Lily made a helmet, um, a hoplite helmet um, that the gladiators, I think it was gladiators, and they use toothpicks and clay to make the spike down the middle. Um, anything that you want to do to create um, a model of something. Um, you can paint or color or draw a picture of the same like fashion or accessories, weapons. Um, you can use technology to create a photo presentation um, where the pictures slide through um, about a character or location or event. Um, you can draw, oh wait, no, you can use a website to learn about or listen to an instrument or music that was common during the time that we were studying. Um, let's see, you can use Minecraft. Mind blown. I just saw everybody go, oh, or at least a lot of the boys. I don't know, girls. Do you like Minecraft? I don't know anything about Minecraft, so I'm not sure how this is going to work. But you can use Minecraft or a similar program to build virtual objects or cities or battles representing... Um, the area, the era that we're learning about. You can act out scenes from the readings for the week, record it. That's really fun. Get your siblings or your parents involved. You can use charades to act out characters or events from class. Now, that one you do have to do. You can record it and let people guess so you don't have to act it out live. But if you choose to do that one, you've got to be brave and do it for the class. And you need to come with three of them. Um, then... You can do any one of these activities on the page with a group from the class. So an individual, one, or more people from the class. And there might be, last year I think we did some Olympic things and some kids got together and did some Olympic games together. You can use technology to connect with someone and share what you've been learning. So you could use Zoom or FaceTime or Google Hangouts or some other program similar to that. Um, you connect with them and share what you've been learning. And then all you have to do is tell me about it. Write a little journal entry or type something up. Um, let's see. If you are self-smart, you might write or record the things that you would change about an event in this week's readings. Like, what happened if we hadn't gone to battle? What happened if this person had died before they decided to kill a whole generation of people? What would history, like, what would the future, our present life, look like if that had not happened? Um, then, or you can create a digital diary um, from the perspective of a character. So, like, pretend like you're that character and talk about what life was like for you. What's going on? Um, what are you struggling with? What are you trying to decide? But you can pretend to be that person. You could write that or you could record it to share. Um, let's see. 
two more and then I'll let you go. Um, you can create a shadow box or some three-dimensional diagram. So think creating something that you can touch, tangible. Okay, not flat on paper, but something that is three-dimensional of the natural elements. But I want you to use the nature that's around you. I want you to use what you have around you in order to create that. Or you can use technology to research the natural resources of a region that we're learning about. So, like, maybe we're learning about a region that you don't know anything about. And so you could go online with permission and you could learn about the culture. What was it? Did they, were they farmers? Were they, did they trade? Um, <clears throat> were they, like, herding nomadic people? Did they stay and live in cities? Um, but I want you to do something like that and then write or record your findings. So you see, history doesn't have to be boring. And every week when we get together, I'm going to talk about what you learned that week. And then we'll do some kind of activity that goes with it. And that activity will give you um, some hands-on, fun group stuff that we can do. Okay? So I think that that's it. That's all I have for you. I just want you to think to yourself when you're getting frustrated that God made you with certain gifts and we're going to learn more about them all year, okay? So, what are you going to do with this when class is over? What are you going to do? Where are you going to put it? Um, let's see. Who can tell me? Um, how about Jonah? Where are you going to put this? when we're done with class. Where are we going to put it? Yes, the backpack. Hopefully you said the backpack. But this is where it's going to go. In your backpack, make sure you give it to your mom. I'm going to put on a moto that I gave it to you, so they're going to ask you for it. And if you say, I don't know, then what are they going to say? <sighs> I'm frozen. Okay, I'll see you guys hopefully next week. Until then, bye.